Parent and Family Resource Introduction to Personal Change Aloisa discusses personal change and the desire to grow in love. She also comments on parents being a child's first teacher and the opportunity they have to be a loving influence in a child's life via their lived example. Recorded on the 4th of March 2021 at 12pm in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi, I'm Eloisa. Welcome to this Parenting Principles program. In this presentation, we're going to be talking just about focusing on yourself first before you start focusing on others. As a parent, if you've got one child or multiple children, often it's quite easy to to just see everything as chaos happening around you and that you've got no control or no say over what's happening in the environment. I don't believe that's true. In fact, I feel that as the parent in an environment, particularly with very, very young children who are just reflecting what's going on between you know, the adults and, and the environment at large, so any other adults who might be in, well, any adults, parents, and let's, we'll just say parents, and that applies to caregivers or guardians or you know, anyone who's in that environment, they're just reflecting their environment. If you're all focused outwards, then you're not really going to change what's inside of you. So as a principle, focus on yourself first. I don't mean focus on yourself in a narcissistic, self-absorbed way where you want to get everything what you want. I'm talking about love. So if there's an issue in your family or in the environment of your family, if there's an issue between you and your partner, you need to look at everything, but first look at yourself. What issue of love is being exposed here for you to feel about or for you to learn more about love what is going on in that in that context and if you take it to yourself and you know feel through your own issues first then you'll be clear on what is yours and then you'll be able to look at more clearly on what's happening for the other parties in your family very important important thing to do is you know anything that happens to you in your life I kind of feel like we are, well, I feel like we are the main character in our, in our story or in our life. So if we are there, then there's always something for us to feel. And until we're at one with God, and even then you're going to keep discovering all these wonderful things as well and having all these emotional experiences and being all really emotional from what I understand. But it will be, you know, you'll be discovering all your desires and there'll probably be a lot of, well, I don't even know what it's like because I've never done it. But in this time where you're at now, looking at where you're at for me every single attraction that happens in my life helps me to see something more about myself either where I'm out of harmony with love or where I'm in harmony with love actually now I'm starting to see some things here it used to just always be I just say oh there's another thing that I'm out of harmony with. oh there's another thing there's another thing now sometimes I can actually say, hold on no I'm actually in harmony with love here um wow and this is the response that I get and I often have, then might have feelings that come up about, wow, I'm doing the right, like the loving thing that's right from, you know, a love-based perspective, and I'm still being treated badly. So, wow, I've got some feelings now to feel through about how unloved I feel and some demands I want. I want to feel loved and I want people to like me and whatever those things are, which are all unloving things. So that part is now needs to be refined, you know, and, and worked through and me to, to release the emotions that I have about you know feeling like I, I want other people to love me because love is a gift and they don't ha and nobody has to love me and nobody has to love anybody else and that's the beauty of love you know it's such a beautiful gift because it has to come from your own soul and your own heartfelt desire to give it so you can't force someone to love you and you can't demand that they love you because now you're out of harmony with love when the focus is on you, then you're also going to learn more about yourself. You can develop your own soul condition and you can improve in, you know, in love and you learn more about love and truth and how the universe works yourself. And as you do that, then you can um, become someone who actually can uphold love in the environment. And naturally your soul will do that as you grow in love and progress in, in love. But at first, you know, well, for me anyway, I, I kind of didn't really know how to do that. And because I would accept a lot of things towards myself, I then also accepted, you know, those things happening in the environment. 
And that's something that, you know, has been, you know, taken me to learn to speak up and to be truthful and to be more honest and open about those things. And also by me finding out more about myself and learning about love and truth and all of these things, again, not in a narcissistic self-absorbed way, but just learning about love and where I'm not loving or where I am in harmony with love. So it's sort of like just coming to see myself as I really am. This then enables me to get to a point where I can actually educate the children in our care on the things that I've learned or the things I've discovered. And if they, you know, some, because they're, uh, you know, our children um, and have come through my ex-husband and I, those children have got some of the same feelings I have. So our daughter has some very similar feelings that she's like got that I have about myself. The boys have some feelings that their dad has, you know, and they've been passed down and the children have them. So when I work through my own feelings and my own belief systems and all of those kind of things, I can then also share with the children about, hey, like, you know, if they're sincere about working through their gear, if they have questions about that, then I can answer those in a truthful way because I've had the experience. So this is another lovely quality of, you know, growing your soul and developing your soul condition into a more loving state. Choosing to become more loving is a personal decision that you're going to need to make. And so this brings me to the choice of change. Do you want to? Do you have a desire to actually make soul-based change? If you don't, you're not going to do it. If you do, you will. So being honest about things is really important. Like this, we asked a question in a previous presentation about do I want to love? And being very honest about that because if you don't, then you're not going to. And if you go, no, I don't, and you get all angry about it, or if you're just like, no, I don't, you don't want to, I do suggest to explore why. The why is really important. Find the cause of why you don't want to, because that will then help you to see that actually maybe you do, but you've just got all these other things in the way that are causing you to feel like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. That feels like work. That feels like this. That feels like whatever, which just exposes some false beliefs you have about love. And you could just put that in any, you know, put that to any other you know, quality or, or other aspect of this program. So you could apply that to truth. How do you feel about truth? And then, you know, find out if you don't like truth, why? Figure out your reasons why and emotionally work through those because then your relationship with truth will change. Happens with your relationship with your kids. All right, how do I really feel about being a parent? If you work through all of those, your relationship with your children will change. How do I really feel about my partner? How do I really feel about men? How do I really feel about women? Why? You know, find the cause, find the reasons, find your justifications. Find all those things out. The more you do, the more you can work through, the more your relationships will improve. This discovery, self-discovery process is really fun and enjoyable. You come to know and understand yourself in a way that is, yeah, it's a real, it's, it's lovely actually. And also I've noticed for me, the more that I become more okay with my own feelings and my own self-expression and things like that, which I'm still working on, the more I'm interested in other people and what they feel and who they are and just the gifts that God's given them and what are they really like and what's their nature like and what's their personality like. And there's like a lot more joy and desire to interact with other people as well rather than just sort of staying kind of insular about things, which for me was sort of a way to protect myself from certain feelings that I didn't want to feel. Very simple, hey? Very simple. So back to change. Uh, if you don't want to change, you're not going to. So I'm just suggesting to figure out why or, or whatever. And for me, I want to be at one with God. That means I'm going to have to change a lot. I've got to go from the reality that I've believed was sort of the family dynamic here is kind of, I don't know, kind of totally not reality. And that's, you know, coming to God's reality is a process of change. And it is giving up everything that I thought about myself and believed about myself and thought I was and who I was and all of those things and actually discovering what God made in my soul, like what is my nature and personality, like what gifts has God given me, what, what passions and desires do I have, who am I as God created me, and there's all this other stuff, it's like a, Jesus and Mary use this lovely analogy in divine truth of being sort of like, you know, just having all this mud on you, and it's like you've got to like wash away all of the mud to find the real you underneath, and we have like sort of all these injury, injured you know, feelings and all these beliefs and all these things that we think are us or these facades that we're presenting or, you know, and I'm just finding the more emotionally that I work through, the more I discover, oh, actually, no, I don't like certain things that I thought I liked or, oh, I really like things that I never even thought that I would be interested in doing. So 
yeah, it opens up a lot of different things about yourself. And I feel like God's given us this lovely provision on earth, as I was saying before, of like this lovely playground to learn about ourselves and become self-aware, to come to know ourselves um, and, that's, or, and our, what's really what our souls are like. And I think that's a really lovely gift that God has given to us. With change, change, you've got to have a passionate desire to change. Else it's going to just get a little bit hard or a little bit bumpy and you're just going to want to give up. Also, so it changes in the soul, which I keep saying, but that's a really important principle to remember that the only real change is soul-based change. And that is an emotional experience in order to go through, in order for that real change to happen. You can't change others. You can only change yourself. Uh, for another person to change, they have to want to change. You can inspire change in the sense of by living, you know, a more loving life. I know for me, having uh, Jesus and Mary as wonderful friends of mine, they, their ex example is so inspiring and has helped me to say, look, I, I want certain things of, of what I see them living in their life and certain dynamics and the way they relate to people and interact and how honest and truthful Jesus is and how you know, he, he has like these superpowers, I feel, of being able to um, feel, feel another person's past and the cause of why they do what they do. And I feel like that's a wonderful gift that, you know, and it really it's actually a testament to his own development of going through enough emotions to actually be able to feel and, and understand another person. And that's something that I would love to be able to do. The fact that I can't do it right now means that I've got some issues that I need to work through myself in order to be open enough to do that. But I, I feel like having this inspiration is such a, and also a lived example, is just a wonderful opportunity. And if we take that back to families and children, you as a parent can be a lived example of, you know, of being a loving influence in the world and standing up for truth and speaking truth and being you know, transparent and being open with other people and being, you know, having an interest in others. Now, if you don't have an interest in others, you can't be interested in others. But your example, the point is, is your example can either be like a loving influence and a loving example and an inspiration to others, or it can be something not to aspire to and something that they don't, which I suppose in a way is a form of inspiration, isn't it? Like when you sometimes have people that you really don't want to be like, it is an inspiration to be another way. <laughs> I suppose I was talking about inspiration more as in people doing things that you then aspire and you'd love to be like or love to do. So, and, and I think when I sometimes see little, like little tots or little baby, you know, little kids with it, it's like sometimes they are, they're kind of looking at their parents, like they're these amazing people who they want to be like, you know, and sometimes it makes me really sad because Sometimes they're aspiring to be, you know, to give their own nature and personality up in order to get the approval of the parent. And sometimes I feel like, yeah, you know, I can see why the child would want to aspire to certain qualities in, in their parent. And so it, I think sometimes it's easy to forget when you enter the daily grind that you are an influence, like a, one of the biggest influences on your child and your children. And if you make positive change in yourself, they're also going to see that. And I can see in our own family. For instance, like I literally thought that my biggest passion and desire, my only role in life was to be a mum and, and a wife. And over time that's changed. And I do feel very sad for our daughter because I can see that that sort of influenced her and her beliefs about what a woman should do. And now I'm in engaging my passions and desires more and, and doing that. But she's 13 now. And so she has this sort of past experience. And and I see her not always acting on her passions and desires and not enacting them and going out and, and, you know, pursuing them with her whole heart because she's got some fears and some worries and some concerns and some beliefs now about those that she's inherited from me. And so that I feel is like not, not a good example that I set for, for her. And it wasn't a good example that I set for our boys either of that a woman sacrifices, you know, for the man and does all these things for the man. So I feel like those things are not to be looked up up to but I can see how because those were what I did and what I believed I suppose were right us I wouldn't have done them at the time because that's what I believed in my injured state I can see that the children have inherited that and are now acting that out I can now see that being an inspiration to a child it can be in a loving or an unloving direction and you know or being an example to a child like being an inspiration I suppose is to help inspiring I sort of see as being Aspire, you know, 
inspiring to do something different than what you've already, already you know, what, then where you're at. But we are examples to our children. And so if we change and we make shifts and changes, then the child will see that they also can do that and that's a possibility. And I think that's a lovely gift to give um, children um, or, and adults is to show the possibility um, that you can make different decisions and you can have changes in your life and you can do things differently. And change is a wonderful thing. And particularly, I feel like if you become a more loving person, uh, you can choose, as I said, to change in, a, in an unloving direction, but that will just cause a lot of pain and suffering to both you and your family. And that will have to be a choice that you'll want to make. And if you want to make that, then at some point it will need to be corrected because everything that's unloving eventually gets destroyed. Sadly, when there are children involved, there's a lot of influence when we're unloving on, on those children and they inherit belief systems and you know, a lot of harm can be done. So, and that's something that I don't um, feel is the best way to go about it. And in fact, I feel like it's quite unloving and unethical to do that to children. You are the change in your life if you want to change. And if you don't, you're not going to change. There's some stages to change. You go from denial um, where you kind of are clueless and you know nothing or you want to be in denial, you don't want to know anything, to then slowly working through various um, aspects to become more sensitive to what's really going on. Usually it's, at first you sort of get an intellectual awareness. Often for me it's been through via external feedback of like, oh, I do this thing or, oh, I'm like this. Or, oh, wow, okay, this thing's happening. Once you go sort of through that intellectual stage, then you kind of have to come to emotional understanding where you come to see like, you feel it, like you're like, oh wow, okay, like here's like, you know, something going on, what's going on? And you're feeling like, I suppose you feel the sin of it, you feel how heavy it feels and how wrong it is. And then I, like I notice sometimes I get feedback and I just start seeing all the areas that I'm doing it and having all these me memories and all this stuff going on. And then, you know, once you sort of have this, you know, well, that's the sort of intellectual awareness. Then you have an emotional way to start feeling about, about it and feeling the sin of it and feeling through it and feeling the reasons why until you get to the cause of it. And then once you get to the cause of it and you feel and release that, and that's a whole process of emotion. And usually we sort of go through, you know, like denial, you know, then we've got our addictions and we've got anger, then we've got fear, then we've got grief, and then we've got, you know, sort of released. That's a very simplistic sort of way of doing it. And often all of those things, it's not sort of as clear cut as that, but it all sort of mixes in together and sort of all overlaps and ends up sort of all happening sometimes feeling at once. Like you might be in and out of fear and anger all at one time and then you're in grief and, you know, fear and whatever. And if you just let yourself feel rather than overthinking it too much, you'll you be fine and it'll go real good. Once then you've gone through, you know, you deny your intellectual awareness, your emotional awareness, you've got to the cause and you've released that. And finally, you'll get to permanent change and you won't have to try anymore to make a different decision and you won't have to try and be different. You already automatically will be. And that's the beauty of doing the soul-based change is that it's real permanent lasting change. And so I highly recommend it. And that's the beauty of doing soul-based change. It's permanent, soul, like soul-based change is permanent, forever, done and dusted change, unless you make a different decision and then renege on it. But something that's quite interesting is when you actually develop in love and become more loving and you start being more ethical and more moral, your soul indicates when you're not and, you can't, and it feels worse when you try and do that same thing again when you've actually gone through the emotional process. And some things you just, it feels almost like I, I can't do them. And the reality is you could do them, but the pain of it or there just isn't even like a desire to do it. It's quite an interesting um, result, like consequence of, of the change of making, you know, soul-based change is that often you don't want to do the thing anymore and it becomes harder to do it because it feels, just doesn't feel good to do it anymore. So it's just a little bit about change and, you know, some of the principles that you can only change yourself, can't change anybody else. Change is just something, like it, it, we're made to change, our soul is designed to change and grow and expand and receive more love and be stretched. So when you feel uncomfortable, you can just remind yourself, I'm just being stretched. <laughs> and, you know, this is a good thing for me. It's real good to be confronted and, and stretched. 
that means that something in you is like being confronted with something that might be out of harmony with love or, or an opportunity to become more loving. So I encourage you, if you're not keen on change and you think it's a bad thing, figure out why, ask some questions. There will be some reflection questions that will come um, later on. These are just the preliminary videos to introduce you to a whole no number of concepts and ideas. But if you're having already thoughts and feelings or whatever, I encourage you to pause the video, feel about those things as they come up. I had something about emotions that we'll talk more in depth about is when an emotion is there, feel it. Take yourself off to your bedroom or your you know, shower or your bathroom or somewhere where you can just have some quiet, peace and quiet for a little while, go to your car, whatever it is, and let yourself feel what you feel. Um, in the moment is the best because that's when it's there and ready to come out. And also remember, God never gives you more than you can, um, you know, handle. Even though you might feel overwhelmed, let yourself feel the overwhelming feelings that might come out, uh, come up and uh, just let them out. You know, God's got it handled. God's there if you want to have a relationship with him. And yeah, I just encourage you to, to come to know yourself and let yourself become your real self. And that means you need to discover your injured self and your hurt self first, if that makes sense. And all the, and your, and your unloving self, like we've been harmed in our childhoods um, most of the time as children. But we have done a lot of harm as we got older by acting on things that we didn't choose to deal with in our past. And it's something as parents we really need to remember is that when we feel hard done by, well, let's look back at really, we need to assess honestly, what are we doing in our lives that is unloving? And let's look at that and deal with that because you can deal with all of those things. You can also forgive what has been done to you. But instead of playing the blame game, I encourage you to change yourself and to really wholeheartedly look at you yourself of where you're not very nice, where you're being unkind, where you're being unloving, you know, and where you are being loving and kind too. But often we have a tendency to prefer to kind of say, hey, look, I'm so good in this area, or I'm doing well in this area, and then skip over all the things that we're doing that are very unkind and unnice to other people and are unloving to other people. I notice most people don't want to look at the things that they do to harm others. They'd rather it look at how they're being harmed. So if you really want to change, you're going to need to change you and your actions and your decisions and what you do to others. And that's how you're going to become a more loving person. So all the best with that. And I'll see you in the next, um, in the next presentation.